Welcome to the Upper Room, each and every one of you. I welcome you in the name of Jesus. We thank God that you're here with us. If you can hear me, just give me a thumbs up so that I know that you can hear me really well. We thank God that you are here once again. We believe, we continue to believe as we open our hearts and our minds and remove every familiarity from our mind, remove every familiarity from our environment to know that God will speak to us and when he speaks, and even before he speaks, we will give him a good crown. The Bible talks about the problem um, is not the seed of the kingdom. The problem is not the word of the kingdom. The problem is the crown. Once God finds a great ground, the best ground, and that ground is a ground of understanding, is a ground that has no offense, and is a ground that has put to death the power of mammon over, over our lives. And that at that moment, when you find that, the, the, the ground is so fertile for God's word. We believe and we know that God's word will bear fruit and you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water and whatever you do shall prosper. Hallelujah. I want us to look at one scripture before Papa comes on and continues our last part tonight of the mind and how the supernatural mind works and what is the function and what why is it so important 2 peter chapter 1 to the book of second peter in chapter 1 the book of second peter in chapter 1 and verse 3 the bible says as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness to the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. I read again, He's, as his divine power has given to us, has been given, you and I have already received divine power. You don't have to pray for it. It's in your spirit. It is deep down in your inner man. God has already given it to you. And what he has given to us pertain to life and godliness. Every aspect of your life, every aspect of your life, God has given to us divine life, not just natural life, not just normal life, not just routine life, not just mundane life, not the life of the past, but a divine life. God has given to us divine life. The life that you now live is not a natural life, but a divine life. There must be divinity in our life and God, the Bible says, the divine power must be working in our everyday life. The challenge we have in the church many times is that only on Saturday or Sunday or once a week or maybe twice a week, people are very active spiritually. Why is that so? Because although the divine power is in their spirit, the mind has not been transformed and changed so that whatever that is in the spirit can now, buy, can now flow through the mind. The mind becomes a conductor. The mind becomes a very good point of flowing, uh, whatever that is in the Holy Spirit, flowing through our spirit, through our spirit, through our spirit into our mind. Our mind is does not shut it down like we read in the book of Romans chapter 8. The carnal mind is an enemy to God. It's God's enemy. And many times the natural mind. So why is it that although this has been given to us, power has been given to us, we don't see the power in our daily life. Where is the where is the misconnect? Where is the gap? The gap is in our mind. The gap is our mind is a natural mind. The power inside of you is a divine power. The divine power enters your mind, but your mind does not comprehend it. Your mind shuts it down, and now it goes back into your spirit and waits for an opportune time. As we begin to listen to this series again and again and again, I pray that the effectiveness of our daily life is only really, really going to be there because to the amount that our mind is renewed. I say again, the effectiveness of divine power flowing in our daily life is directly corresponding to how much our mind is renewed to begin to allow the values the knowledge of God, the ways of God, the mind of God to flow through our mind. Our mind is not a blockage. Our mind does not fight with it. Our mind is not its enemy, but our mind becomes an aid. Our mind helps whatever happens in our spirit to flow through. So 
I pray that as we continue this series, we've taken this time, we've chosen this subject carefully because the productivity of our daily life and the victorious living every day will determine stature. Part of stature is overcoming, overcoming the love of money, love of self, love of the world. These are the powers that work in our mind. These are the powers that have found strongholds in our mind. And when we pull down these strongholds, we find that as we yield to the workings of the Holy Spirit daily, it is the yielding of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and our minds that will cause the stature to come into our lives because that is what that will bring impact to other people's life. I pray today as we open our hearts and our minds, remove every familiarity that we have and we're trusting God that God will speak to us. We're not, we are, we are not uh, familiar with the voice of our father, but we look for the God of our father as our father begins to speak. God bless you and give you a hearing ear, a seeing eye and a heart that is perceiving to the Holy Spirit. God bless you. One of the things that get marred and get destroyed and which destroys the relationship is wrong perception. And the quality of our relationship is always tested. When somebody brings in another perception that you have concerning that person, somebody else try to paint another picture. Are you listening? And good relationships are destroyed by these perversions. May God set you free. I, I don't want to hurt anybody by having, thinking for years the wrong things about that person. Because you, you, you have virtually worked with hell to make their life miserable. It's the most unkind thing that you can do to one another. Are you listening? Yes. That's why perspectives are dangerous. The conclusion that you have in your head is dangerous. Yeah. I'm open. I'm not dogmatic. I won't push it. If I hear anything negative and I see the negative, you just got to walk graciously. Because if they come to you, let the Holy Spirit use you to change that. Yeah. If they don't come to you, it's not a problem. Are you listening? But you will not tell what is not true to somebody else. That's why people ask me, what do you think of so-and-so? I'm too quick. I'm not going to fall for this. I said, well, what do you think? What do you think? How, how do you see it? Oh, I, I see that. I said, where did you hear it? From one of your members. I said, we're going to call him now. No, 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 I, I just want for you only. I say, I'm not James Bond. Be careful when they use you like that. Yes. I say, it's a very cheap way of trying to use me and say, get lost. Are you listening? We must be so open to give people a second chance, e even if it's true. Okay, I lost you. Because you have in your mind that every sinner must be brought to task. God knows about your sin for a long time and he didn't do that. Are you listening? How many times we hide? We do things that are wrong. God knows and keeps all the record that he, he knows the recorded time. But yet he did not use that against us. Okay. Let, let me show you how dangerous you are if you're on the wrong side. You can bring judgment to the world that you live in. Genesis. Don't be sober on me. Be sober in yourself. The scripture in Genesis I'm not saying I'm perfect. I hope that's not your perspective. We, we're all not perfect. We want to make sure that everybody cross. We want our brothers to cross, even if they got mistake. When the Lord told us about the portal that he has opened up since September, 
all the way down to JLS this, this year. I asked the Lord, how many of my people are going to cross? He said 60%. My heart dropped. How are we going to help all the others? So I had to find a series of lessons which you have in the book, in your manual, to help them. So I preached and preached and teach and thought, ministered and prayed, had extra services on Wednesday night to make sure all will cross. When this GLS is over, when you are gone home, we're going to rejoice with them. Because many things are now falling in place. Amen. Things that we could not move. Yes. Only God could have done it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I went to ask him last Sunday, because GLS finished on Saturday. He didn't tell me anything. He said all will be well. They will pass through, even if they are slower, does not matter, so that something sovereign will happen. Amen. So at the end of the day, I still get to rejoice with the people because what was impossible is becoming real. Amen. Are you listening? Yes. So most of them cross. I said, what about the ones who didn't cross? He said, they will cross at another time, but they will not be harmed. Hey, you, you need to protect them. Genesis chapter 6. Sorry that we're bringing you to this verse, but because you look intelligent and courageous to follow me. Verse 5. Genesis 6 verse 5. Are you there? Yes. Maybe look at verse 3 first. My spirit shall not strive with men forever, because he also is flesh. Nevertheless, his days shall be 120 years. Is that right? Yes. Verse 5. The Lord saw the wickedness of men was great on the earth, and that every intent, say every intent, every intent. of the thoughts of his heart were, conti were only continually evil. Yeah. In verse 11, Now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God, and the earth was filled with violence. God looked on the earth, and behold, he was corrupt, for the, all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth. But make for yourself an ark. And protect all those you care for. Are you listening? Yes. This, is the, this is the danger. Do you want to know when judgment is pending? When judgment is coming? When the intent of every thought that we have is to get some evil result. Thought and intent are two different things. Intent is the purpose, the drive behind. Are you listening? The drive behind. Why you do what you do? Why you pray that way? Why you say that way? Why you live that way? There is a drive. Are you listening? Say thoughts. Intent, Intent. Ways, ways were all corrupt. Thoughts, intent, ways were all corrupt. Not only is corrupt, it was filled with violence. That means they will do anything to get what they want. Are you listening? Is this getting dangerous? This is what will draw judgment of God upon any nation when their thoughts are to just harm and hurt. And the Bible says, Noah found favor. He was a righteous man, blameless in his, in his time. Noah walked with God. But God left him here on this earth. He not walked with God, but God took him. So each person has a walk that will change the destiny and the course of their own life. Say thoughts, thoughts. intent, intent. ways, Everything they think about is, is negative. So God's judgment will come. Are you listening? Yes. So let my thoughts say, let my thoughts, let my thoughts have, the right have the right intentions. If I'm thinking, it must be for God's purpose, must be for, God's purpose. for God's plan. God's plan. I, don't I don't want to have another reason for thinking like this. I will, do my best I will do my best to be my brother's keeper, be my brother's keeper 
because God has set me free, given me the power to change lives. I will live like Him. Thoughts, intents, ways, and other thoughts that come into my mind will be clean, will be checked, will be scrutinized. I will not accept everything that's in that's in my mind has been fully God. I will discern. I will begin to sense when it's wrong. Lord, help me so that I have less less and less blind spots. So that one day I will walk in the trueness fullness of light. Then you can call me safe. You are dangerous to have along if your thoughts, intent, ways are continually only can spring to negative. That mind is dangerous. That mind will see judgment withdrawn. That's when demonic powers begin to manifest. Genesis 6. That's when demonic spirits are attracted to. When the only thought you can think is negative. The only thought that you can think is execute what is not right. Are you listening? That's why when people are hurt in church, they're fighting back the church. You, you can see and smell the very foul smell. You can feel when you think about the situation, you can feel decaying flesh. It's all here. You can smell flesh. Okay. I say you can smell flesh. This is one of the most difficult things to handle in chapter 6. Because when the thoughts, intents, ways, and the ongoing thought pattern is only programmed for evil. Is dangerous. Are you listening? Yes. Then God, listen, who loves the whole world is ready to destroy it. Because he thinks that is so potent, so destructive force on planet earth. You and I must be delivered from the mind that is carnal, yes. that is hostile to God. Yes. He cannot obey the law. Even if he wants to, yeah. it is so programmed, you cannot even hack it. You cannot destroy it because you have built it for self-destruction. If God doesn't stop men and men continue the way they are starting today, this earth will self-destruct or rather they will destroy the earth. We call them suicide bombers. But these people who don't love anything or anybody, not even themselves, they bring destruction to everybody around about. That's why the last days is not very hard to find. 1 Timothy, please, we are supposed to change the world, not allow the devil to change us. A lot of things are inside this head. If you renew your mind, you transform your life. Yes. You renew your mind, you can present your body, not like Greeks, beat it up, destroy it, and abuse it. No, you can surrender your body to do God's will. And you can rise up and prove God's will with that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. And you can speak to men on, the, on planet Earth and have sound judgment. When, you, when they listen to you, your mind is so articulate, so clear, so, uh, so expressive, they take, they, take, they take your advice because they see wisdom in what you say. Mind is powerful. I say there are minds that shape our future because of the philosophy that we have inside, the theology that we have inside is clean, is divine. God add the papers inside. So we can really change the world. Where are we going? 
One. First. Okay, thank you. Are you hearing? Yes. Because I, I don't want you to go and face the world with the gifts of God and, and don't know the world you're going to try to reach. You better know if you want to change the world, this way the world is moving towards. We, that's why the Bible says we're going to snatch them from hell. Because hell will be on our roads. Hell will be everywhere. It's a spirit. It's a state of, of life. Hell is not just a physical place or spiritual place. It's a state. Are you listening? Timothy, I think. Uh huh. Second Timothy chapter three. When you teach these kind of things, you cannot run. You cannot rush. We got to take care. Somebody say, take care. Take care. You must read this chapter. Let me read the first few lines for you. But realize this. Where, where, which compartment is he talking about? Realize this. He said, come to a clear conclusion. Hear. See. Make up your mind. This is what it is. Realize this, that the last days, difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, lovers of violence, lovers of religion, lovers of pleasure, lovers of knowledge, rather than lovers of God. But the Apostle writes it in an amazing way. Say, difficult times will come for men. Say, for men. Because whether you understand or don't understand, the end of the world will have this kind of people that make the last day difficult. These people will be around. Those who love themselves, love money, rather than lovers of God. They are the ones who make the difficult times. You have a good day because you had a good experience, good people were around about you, then you had a good day. There is no happy birthday to you if you brought the wrong person with you. Is that right? Because happy days, you can sing, Oh, happy day. But you can't sing that. Why? Because the wrong person is there. And verse, can you give me a few minutes? Let me open this up for you. So when bad people join the good people, the good people are the ones who suffer. The wicked act wickedly and they rejoice. When the righteous act wickedly, they repent. So two different people inside the place. All right, let's, let's go in verse 5. Avoid such men. Why? If you don't want your life to be messed up, avoid that. Avoid these people. Because this is what they do. For among them are those who enter into household, this house fellowship. The destruction of your home. Captive, enter into household. Say, enter into household. Captive, Captivate weak women weighed down with sin, led on by various impulses, always learning and never come, able to come to the knowledge of the truth, just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses. So these men oppose the truth. Men of depraved mind reject, rejected in, in regard to the faith. They will not make any more progress. 
but their folly will be obvious to all, as James and Jamboree's folly was. That means they will challenge leadership. I said they will challenge leadership. They will learn, but they never come to the knowledge of the truth that sets them free. So whatever they feed in church feeds this nature. So you thank God for people leaving your church. Because if they stay long enough, especially if these people who for men, if that verse two for men are people like thoughts, intent, ways, continually programmed for destruction. If they stand with you or be in anything that's spiritual, they will destroy it. You got to avoid such men. Are you listening? Because they oppose, oppose truth, they oppose Moses, they oppose the plans of God, oppose future progress. There's enough warning in here that I said, God, if you keep anybody, it better be you keeping them. The Lord adds, the Lord takes away. I said, this is your job. I'm going to leave this thing on church numerical growth to you. I'm, that's if the Lord gives the increase, the Lord will give the increase. Because you are not an expert on human behavior. Even as a prophet, my discerning cannot be usefully applied for some people. Even I don't know, because a prophet knows in part. Are you listening? You don't know everything. You thought this is going to be your successor. Surely enough, you're going to be your successor, but they're going to assassinate you. Is it what? Assassinate, thank you. Even that word is frightening. You can't even say it. The Holy Spirit has to give me utterance. Because that's one reason why all my hair is dropped. Okay. I just lied to you. Say, for men will be. If men will be like this, you can consider that time difficult times. Are you listening? Perilous moment. Danger is at hand. Are you listening? And these men are at work all the time. They handle weak women, they challenge authority, they lead others by various impulses. Lead, say L E lead. L E D. Led. On by various impulses. So there's some kind of leadership training going on there. Oppose Moses. Are you listening? Verse 10, but you follow my teaching. Don't follow that way because you'll be like one of them. Follow my teaching, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, perseverance, persecution and suffering, such as have happened to me. Hallelujah. Has all this thing happened to you yet? Perseverance, suffering, persecution. If, if not, just add to your list. Hallelujah. Because when you are persecuted, you live godly lives. You have no opportunity to lie because everything is coming for your neck. Indeed, all who desire to live godly lives will be persecuted, but evil men and impostors will proceed from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you, however, continue in the things that you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them. Verse 16, all scripture is inspired by God, and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the men of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Do you want to be adequate? Yes. Do you want to be equipped? Yes. For every good work? Yes. Then God has to really set you apart. The scripture which is inspired by God must change you, transform you. If not, you will be adding to the number of the men. Are you listening? Yes. Hallelujah. I didn't know how to get it out of my heart until now. Because I don't want you to feel I'm pointing my finger at you. I want to point the finger at them. 
and identify them because in every aspect of your life, whether it's good or bad, people are involved. In your victory, you can search out somebody helped you get across. In your defeat, somebody helped you to go down. Sometimes the way you think, that means you shoot yourself in the foot. So if it's not you, it's going to be somebody. It's always people's direction, perspective, their thinking pattern that stumbles us. Are you listening? Talk to me, are you listening? Yes. Paul seemed to have serious trouble in trying to protect Timothy and Titus, especially Timothy. If you read Timothy, you discover all kinds of people who are still sitting in church. He warns him about more people than anybody else. He doesn't talk to him about the devil. His letter is to warn about people, including Alexander the coppersmith. Timothy, listen carefully because if he cannot get me, he's going to get you. Are you listening? So Paul began to virtually clear the ground for Timothy to rise. Are you listening? So this one has a lot of keys for protection. Can you say amen to that? So when you read 1 Timothy and 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, he even teach him how to behave in church, how to choose an elder, because we are not the best in choosing people. Our ability to, to perceive who is, who is good, who is bad, who will stay right to the end is not always at the highest level. We choose leaders quickly because we don't have time to wait. And then only found out they've been waiting to kill us for a long, long, long time. Are you listening? Yes. How to deal with an older man, how to deal with a younger man, how to deal with widows, all behavior pattern. One Timothy verse three, Paul was very concerned. I'm concerned too. So I'll be Paul, you'll be Timothy. Let's get this rubbish out. Your church will be better. Your vision, your vision will come back. Your clarity of mind will be clear again. Your understanding will be with depths. If you clear your pathway, you can do your job well. Amen. So just be on guard. First, let them be tested. Then let them serve. This is the whole pastoral dimension that is here. How to look out for the right people and to look out for the wrong, wrong people. But in case I'm delayed, Paul, what are you trying to say? In case I'm delayed, I'm not with you. These are things you need to guard. You will know. So I, so I write this to you that you will know. Say, I will know, I will know how, how one, one ought to conduct himself in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and support of truth. All right, after he said that in chapter 4, he opens up again. This time, he said, the Spirit of God is also saying this. Say after me, the Spirit explicitly says, there's a hard word to understand. The Holy Spirit is hammering all the horns and rolling all the drums. And what is that? Symbols. What do you do with the symbols? Smashing, crushing, the symbols and announcing this important word says that the, the, in the latter times some will fall away from the faith. Paying attention to whom? Please talk to me. 
deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. If the Holy Spirit warns like this, please let your ears be heard. Because people will no longer choose what you call uh, what doctrine? Sound doctrine, thank you. Why? Because if you don't have sound doctrine, it's really going to destroy the thing that we're building. Are you listening? So let's say this, but the Spirit explicitly says in the latter time, some, somebody say hallelujah, not all. So only he know how to divide the ones who are going to follow deceitful spirits and those who follow doctrines of demon. Are you listening? And then it says in verse 2, By means of hypocrisy of liars, seared in their own conscience as with a branding iron, men who forbid marriage and advocate abstaining from food. When you talk about forbid marriage, it means they don't want anything of permanent relationship. Anything with covenant. No. Married for 22 years. That's bad. Devoted husband, that's not good. Are you listening? They forbid marriage. Anything that has to do with covenant relationship. Anytime you want to take relationship up higher, you see this man will fight it. Advocate abstaining from food. They're religious. This can, that cannot. This food is not good, that food is not good. The Bible says, we got to eat everything with grateful heart by means of prayer and the word of God to sanctify it. Thank God. You don't need to pray when it comes to food if you're choosing the right food. When you put the wrong food, you have to pray. We're thankful to God, we can eat it with thanksgiving. But you know, the prayer part is you got to sort this devil out before he destroys you. God is going to do an amazing work in our lives. I, I want you to stand. This pastoral dimension is, a, is going to set us free and give us an opportunity to take our people to the next level. Yes. But your mind must not come in the way. Yes. Because if, if your mind is continually receiving revelation from the Holy Spirit, you won't go to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. Yes. The Holy Spirit will be upon your life. Yes. But the amazing thing is this, Say, the amazing thing is this. Amazing thing is this. God, uses the mind God uses the mind to reveal, to reveal the, presence the presence of sin, of sin sicknesses, sicknesses, satanic forces, satanic forces perception, of perception of circumstances. It's, it is deciphered inside the mind. So when you tap the mind, you can read the movements of the enemy. So the mind is not the devil's workshop. When the mind set on the spirit, will give us the information. The police call it intel, intelligence. Are you listening? So what is intel? What is intelligent? Information that allows you to bring order, government, not how to kill, but how to establish government. So we're not trying to describe FBI or CIA or special branch because they do use information in the wrong way. Are you listening? So the intelligence is not very intelligent. 
the special branch is on a tree. Are you listening? If you watch the devil use words in Genesis, you'll be shocked how he can fabricate, twist, turn the truth and make it a lie. And the person didn't know that he has changed the truth to a lie in the conversation. But I'm praying for this gift to be your portion. Yes. The discerning of spirits yes. will become your portion. Yes. And the Holy Spirit must draw near to you so that his light can really protect you. I'm telling you, all our troubles have come from around us. You're sincere. Are you? Yes. You pray. Yes. You sacrifice. Yes. The best deal should be yours. Yes. Why? Because men take honor away from you. Yeah. Men don't believe you. Men lie. So they create difficult times and chaotic, chaotic times. Yeah. But this is going to come to an end. Yes. I said you must open up your heart so that bring Christ in into your life and ask the Holy Spirit to give you revelation so that you think in scripture, you feel in scripture, your progress is because of scripture, everything, because only his word can bring light and when light shines, darkness must flee, you will be the best reader of man's nature and character because you know how to plot the spiritual dynamics and know how long these people will last. They don't have to follow and stumble you, but they can follow God without stumbling you from this day and so I foresee the future is going to be better than the past because we are becoming more intelligent. We have received the right intel, understand the right thing, about all things, yes. the Holy Spirit will give you knowledge. Yes. You, you will learn and come into the knowledge of the, of the Son of God yes. so that you don't have to be deceived. Yes. I see that the, the gift of the discerning of spirits and a strong spiritual inner man yes. is going to be the key. Yes. He is going to teach you how to live in the spirit, live in the dimensions of the spirit so that you can search out all things yes. and you yourself is not harmed. Yes. You'll have a spiritual mind, yes. a renewed mind. Yes. You'll have the mind of Christ. Yes. You'll have the mind of the Spirit. Yes. The Spirit of your mind yes. is going to be changed and transformed. Yes. Because when you were, you were Gentiles, are you listening? When you're Gentiles, your mind operated on a certain frequency. And we're going to come back to that and see why you and I can create a people movement. Why you and I can cause the church to rise so strong and the church become united without any, any contention, any fear. We don't want to be hurt in doing God's work. We don't want to be destroyed doing God's work. But the devil has a way to tell you and warn you and frighten you saying that if you do God's work, you won't get the best. Let the lies come to an end. Our sons and daughters will serve God without fear because God is a good paymaster. He is not Pharaoh. Yes. He'll give us a vision. He'll give us a dream. Yes. He'll give us a blueprint yes. and a pattern and yes. also help us yes. until we finish the assignment. Yes. God is calling you afresh. Yes. He's commissioning you afresh. Yes. This may be difficult times, may be tough time. Maybe this, you may think that this is not the best time because the world's coming to an end. Yes. But I'm telling you, the hand of God's coming strongly upon your life. Yes. You know how to build it well and build it strong despite, in spite of whatever happens around about. No devil can destroy you. No weapon formed against you can destroy you. The hand of God is going to take you across to the next level. Building church will be great. Building church will be fun. Stirring the hearts of God's people will be fun. Leading them, training them will be fun. Because you know that God is on your side. Satan can plan the, the attacks on our lives but he can't win. I said he can't win yes. because God has not planned any defeats for me. Yes. Only feats, only achievement, only breakthroughs. Yes. No more defeats, yes. no more confusion, yes. no more lies. Yes. Because all that he wants me to do, I will be able to do it. Yes. 
Now to him who is able to do yes. exceeding yes. abundantly yes. beyond all we can ask or think, yes. according to his riches in glory, yes. God is going to move mightily upon our hearts yes. that you and I will build yes. and God will fill. Yes. We will build the tabernacle and God will inhabit. Yes. In the name of Jesus, yes. we'll build a strong house. Yes. We'll bring strong disciples. Yes. We'll build strong atmospheres. Yes. Oh, in spite of, despite of all the enemy can create, we are going to see the church of the Lord Jesus Christ alive. The kingdom is going to be advanced. Does not matter what the enemy is trying to do. Our spirit is caught up to the throne. Our, our soul, our body is connected to the dimensions of heaven like never before. We thank you. The Holy Spirit can quicken our mortal bodies. In Jesus' name, He can quicken our mortal bodies. And raise us up one more time. Yes. Resurrection power. Yes. And judgment is about to come to the devil's kingdom. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. I want you to put your hand on your head. Yes. Put it right on top. Because anytime there's major spiritual activity, that's where it comes through. For me. I don't know about you. There's a dimension in the mind that supernaturally connects itself to the spirit. When you put your hand on, on your head, the, through the laying on of hands, spirit transfers to the mind, mind transfers to the spirit. The spirit of another man touches the mind so you can read all things. This is where human intelligence is. I know people who are experts on the mind, the left hem hemisphere, the right hemisphere, where the critical thinking comes from, the left brain, the right brain. But right in the center, where the head closes up, is live transmission. The mind does not receive, sorry, the brains, the natural thing, look like some soft sponge cake. That is a filtering point. But the mind is also spiritual. Often they say the brain has a mind of its own. Are you listening? Yes. The brain, meaning the physical one, has a mind of its own. It sees things differently. And that, that brain controls all the organs in your body and every activity. But this spirit aspect of the mind is life. If the enemy deceives you at that level, everything is contaminated. But the Lord is going to set us free. Yes. We're going to walk out of this so that as a man thinketh, so he will become. As a mind thinketh. You start thinking what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. You have power to become. As many as receive him, he gave them power to become like the Son of God. Yes. The Holy Spirit says, we will cry, Abba, Father, yes. escape the spirit of slavery yes. and mature and be led by him for total victory so that we become heirs and receive our inheritance. Yes. I can sense in the spirit something powerful is happening now. Yes. Some of the memories of the old that has been holding your life at, at ransom is being broken now. Yes. Some of the thought patterns that has been it's been attacking you, it's been broken now. We're not in transition, I'm telling you, it is break, its power is broken now. Your, your mind is becoming freer and freer, so that everything that the Holy Spirit wants, you not only receive it in the spirit, but you also receive it through your mind. Because your mind is a spiritual mind. It's able to appraise all things, judge all things, discern all things. 
and pick up what is needed. Yes. Sense in the spirit that all the things that the enemy has been trying to hold on, hold on to you is being broken now. Yes. There's no more holding of the enemy. Yes. The word is infirmity. Yes. What is that word? Infirmity. Infer infirmity meaning that God is going to bring you and infirm you. That means he's going to cripple you. We've been so crippled in our giving, so crippled in our receiving, so crippled in our understanding. We want critical thinking, not crippled thinking. Cri critical thinking will help us, but the Holy Spirit will help us even more. The consciousness of God is coming. Put your hand on the head and begin to ask the Holy Spirit, let me become clear so that my mind will be connected to the dimensions of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I'm becoming free. I'm becoming freer and freer. There's a freedom that's coming. My mind is free. With the, with the law of my mind, I can set my mind on the things of the Spirit. And there is life, there is life, there is life. I said there is life. Receive life right now, receive life right now. The brain has a mind of its own. It, it deals with the rest of the body. But this aspect of your mind is connected to the dimensions of the Holy Spirit. Receive the discerning ability in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, right now. Let's all read chapter 4 of Hebrews, verse 12. Then read chapter 5, the last few verses. It says that you can discern between good and evil. Because by practice, say practice. So there's one level of discernment that comes by practice. There's another level of discernment that comes by give of discerning. Then there comes another level of discernment, not by give, by you walking in light. Only light will resonate towards you. And that's the highest order. I say that's the highest order. Not one that you learn by by, by, by the training of discerning between good and evil, not by feeding, not by feeding mature food or solid food, not just in that level. The gifts are on another level. I said the gifts are on another level. I'm not sure if I want to tell you this, but I'll open my eyes and tell you. When Jesus looked at the devil, he knew where they were, what they were. When he called out and said, what is your name? They said, I'm Legion. He knew the spirit world better than anyone else. He described Hades. Are you listening? He described Hades as the rich man and Lazarus. Are you listening? There comes a time in life that you become the light for generations to come. Because you're able to see darkness, discern darkness in such a fast, fast manner and push demonic territories away. You will take journey in the right, right time, right place, so that you can flush out demon, demonic activity. But please, that can only be done, not by the natural, but by life. If you're walking in God's destiny and dimension, wherever you go, you're going to destroy things of the spirit darkness. You know that the boat was shaken, the boat was shaken, the waves were coming, is that right? Talk to me. Just five more minutes, I'll let you go. But everywhere he went, he dismantled the powers of the enemy. They don't know he is coming. But he knew where he was going. Because internally directed, for this purpose he came. For this reason, that he might destroy every work of the evil one. That is what a city taker is all about. Nation builders about, you, you got to cross this line. They say, where are we going? Just get into the boat, let's go to the other side. But he knew the rest of the story. Are you listening? That kind of a leader is what we need in this hour. You go back to your city, you're not looking for, what is that? Uh, mapping. Are you listening? You don't have to look for GPS. But every place where the, the sole of your foot treads on, God will give it to you. 
I, I sense that you're going to walk to a certain level of maturity yes. up yes. right now. Yes. Put your hands up to the heavens. This is your portion. This, uh, you do not have to find out how many were killed under the bridge. You don't have to fear how many years the devil has been there and how that voodoo priests have been controlling your village. Doesn't matter. God's going to send you an assignment. That assignment is when you receive the mandate. Every demonic power that must be dismantled, you will dismantle. Even your natural journey will be a spiritual one. You don't know how a walk of a righteous man can affect the atmosphere. That's why when you take a river cruise, you cleanse a lot of things that you don't realize. If you walk in the stature of Christ, it's going to be different. They got into the boat and argued that he was asleep. They don't know what was happening. Things of the demonic world was, before, they, before Jesus could reach the other side, they were sending the spirit realm. Demons were trying to attack them, destroy them. They were so afraid. They said, we're going to die. You cannot die if he's in you. He is life. It's just too late. Because Christ liveth in you. So when you get inside, things will begin to happen. God sent the apostle Peter and John to Samaria. Is that right? They came and discerned a man by the name of Simon the magician who was now becoming the assistant pastor. Are you listening? Yes. He took the limelight because they call him great power. Then he saw Peter, James and Peter and John and he said, look, give me this authority also. Here is some money. What Peter saw in him was far greater than what Philip saw. Philip saw a man who was the great power in the city now becoming part of the church. There was celebration. When the Bible says city rejoice, the church of Philip also rejoice because now they got the big fish. Are you listening? Yes. But in that big fish were things in the spirit world that they did not know. He took the apostolic insight yes. to expose this. Yes. This is what we need to touch. Yes. I said this is what we need to gain. Yes. So that when we look at people, we know why is the connections are what they have, what they don't have, how much of what they have is spiritual dimensions of heaven, what are the other things that are linking them up to the spirit of darkness. If you, if you walk in this dimension, the apostolic grace is beginning to increase. Are you ready for this? That even your natural walk is going to push the enemy out. That God will use you as his battle axe. One last prayer. Put your hands up. I'm sorry, I almost say stick them out. It's all John Wayne's problem. I want you to step in. Step in by the power of the Holy Ghost. Enter in. This portal has been waiting for you for so long. So that everything that we do will have meaning now. Because our feet is resting on higher ground, yes. on holy ground. Yes. Jesus, I pray right now as you build your church, raise up leaders who are strong in the spirit. Yes. Those who know how to put the enemy away out of business, put the enemy's kingdom out of business, yes. so that no two will stand together. Yes. In the name of Jesus, yes. I pray for the power of heaven to break open. Feel them now, right now. Holy Ghost, I thank you that from this moment henceforth, that which is of my spirit, laid upon their hearts and their mind, distribute the measure of the gift. In the name of Jesus, there's an authority that you need to receive. Receive that authority. That in the name of Jesus, you will go change the world. God is giving to us an authority from heaven. 
and that authority is commissioning you right now. That authority is going to take you to the next level. God is increasing your spiritual stature. Receive right now the authority from above. No power form against you will prosper. No word a sign against you will prosper. God is going to take your feet from being trapped by the enemy. He's going to take your feet and you're going to walk everywhere. Every place where the sole of your foot will tread on, God will give it to you in the name of Jesus. Father, I consciously recognize you are here today. You said all authority and power has been given back to you. And we thank you that we can transfer that grace to them. Let your church become so strong. Let every church we represent become so strong. Become the gatekeeper of the city. Become the one watchman over the wall. That what we say will be the end. If we shut the door on the devil, then all of hell is shut. If we open the doors of heaven, all of heaven is open. In Jesus' name, we will control the traffic. That which ascends and descends, we will control the traffic. That things will flow through our life. That all activities will be flowing through the church. That the church will be the hub of divine activity. I release that authority to you. In Jesus' name, demons will hear, sickness will hear, diseases will hear, people will hear. There is, you are as one filled with authority, minister as one with authority. In the name of Jesus, get ready, I'm releasing it right now from, from heaven right now. Let, let the Lord release it to you. Receive it in your heart. Let's speak with boldness, speak with courage. Speak with confidence. Speak like God himself will speak. In the name of Jesus. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Let Lazarus walk. In Jesus' name. Let the case be open. Let Gideon come forth. Let the 7,000 prophets that are hiding will come forth. In Jesus' name. Let Elisha come forth. In the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Let many Davids rise. Let many Samuels rise. Let, let there be many Daniels rising. Many Josephs rising. Let there be a whole new company of people rising. So that the earth can hear the sound of your voice. Let the voice of the Lord break out. The voice of authority. Let the voice of the Lord be majestic. Let the voice of the Lord destroy the setters of Lebanon. And break in pieces a strong tree. I'm telling you I can feel the Spirit of God. I can feel the devil tremble under our feet. Let the enemy be tremble. Let the enemy be tremble. Let the fear of God reach the came of, of the enemy. Let terror strike the hearts of the enemy. In Jesus' name, raise our governing churches, territorial churches. Give your confidence back to you. I said I release the confidence back to you. I release the, con the sense of boldness in your heart. That you will receive the faith of the Spirit of God upon your heart without fear, without fear, without fear of the enemy, of the powers of the enemy. Right now, lift, lift your hands and receive it. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Go take your city. Let's go take the city. Let's go advance the kingdom. Let's go with a shout. Let the walls of Jericho come down. Open the pathway. In the name of Jesus, open the pathway of the Spirit. Let the walls come down. Let the pathway of the Spirit go forth. That we can bring back the harvest. Coming back and returning with joy, with gladness of heart. Because the work of the enemy has come to an end. In the name of Jesus. If you believe in his name, you will cast out devils. You will heal the sick. You will raise the dead. You will speak to the naive. You begin to give information that's needed. Even the naive will begin to build according to the pattern. Because the spirit of revelation is going to flow through your heart. Receive this day. The power to discern. Receive this day. The light comes on your heart. Receive this day. That what you say is final. In Jesus' name. Receive that authority. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Put your hand and thank him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak with courage in your heart. Let boldness return. 
that great power, great grace will be upon you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Say, I have received the spirit of revelation and understanding. I know I can discern the different realms of the spirit. I know what is light, what is darkness. I'm now receiving a clear mandate to get the enemy out. Shut the gates of hell. Open the heavens in Jesus' name and advance your kingdom that even our natural walk will be supernatural. Even our natural song singing it be a voice of God to be reckoned with. In Jesus' name. Every place where the sole of our foot will tread on. God is going to give it to us. We receive this authority. And serve as one under authority. And serve as one who is in authority. And serve as one with authority. In the name of Jesus. Extend our boundary. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Go take the city. Run to the front lines of the battlefield. Go take the city. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank Him. Amen. We thank God for his word today. It's so clear to us that there is a dimension of the spirit that can be tapped by the mind, not just our spirits, but our mind can tap the dimension of the spirit. There is a spiritual dimension even in the mind that the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 24, it says to us in verse 23, it says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man, which after God, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. There is a place, there is a place in the mind for us to begin to, everything that is in our spirit can be discerned by our mind. Why was it so? Because before man fell, his mind and his, his mind and his spirit was one. It was not two, it was not separated. Whatever his spirit felt, his mind could pick it up easily. His, his mind wasn't confused because it was not disconnected. But the moment that man fell into sin, he was separated. His mind was separated from his spirit and his spirit began to, began to read one thing and his mind began to read another. And we can see that today, in today's uh, 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 concluding session, how the, this session began to take us and to begin for us to understand that we can capture the things of the spirit with our mind. I pray that more and more, uh, I believe that the spirit behind the nature, the message is coming from the Holy Spirit through the life of Papa to us is that we live a supernatural life naturally. And that is happens when our mind is totally, totally changed. Our mind totally, totally, we win the battle of the mind. And when we do that, I believe you and I more and more day by day, day by day effortlessly, the divine nature, the nature of, uh, of, the, of, of God inside of our heart is transferred to our mind and the patterns of thinking. We will think according to scripture was one of the statements that was made earlier. And I believe this will become a reality little by little every day, step by step every day. There's 1% every day. There's one little change every day. I believe it will happen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us in the upper room. I know this week will be an amazing week. This week will be a week of miracles, a week of breakthroughs as we begin to believe. Make sure, I want to make sure that our faith is not passive, but it is aggressive. It is active. It is actively pursuing, believing that the greatest miracle is the miracle of a changed life. And we want to make sure that our lives are changed. Sometimes they're waiting for the circumstances to change, but the circumstances will not change until our lives are changed because the power to change life is in the power of a changed life. God bless you. Thank you from all of us that is here. We know that this whole week until next Tuesday will be an amazing week. I pray 
that the reality of the presence of God will be your portion and mine. So have a wonderful week from us, from Papa, from Mum, and from ANS team. We salute you for being here through these years, through the years of COVID and being faithful in the upper room. God will bless your faithfulness and the word of God is coming to you. See you at the top, stay at the top and live from the top. God bless you. And I